Good evening, Theo Trade. You're watching the Theo Night video for the last day of May 2018. It's May 31st, and this is Corey Rosenblum bringing you again the Theo Night video. We're talking key levels on the quad indexes, the S&P, Dow Futures, NASDAQ, and the Russell, mainly for intraday traders, but also for swing traders looking for the next move and what levels are important and what to expect when these levels break. So we'll take a look at these. We're going to do a particular point of view from our volume profile. If you are new to the style of charting, we're looking at the price and volume put on the chart as a distribution. So wherever there's a lot of time or bars or basically the trades taking place and volume taking place, that's going to put a larger distribution or a larger profile. This is usually areas of consolidation contraction, or as we call them, magnets, even gravity spots, where the market is pulled back toward it. We just saw a range departure, failed range breakout, hit the little edge of the value area, and then came right back. So the way we look at the red arrow, the red line on our chart is like a magnet. The yellow lines are our value area extreme. These as well serve as targets to play up toward or to see reversals up against. The other component to look for in these style of charts is open air pockets. That would be this area with not a lot of price and volume took place and we know that price can move rapidly through them. That can create trend or range expansion days. Now, Starting with the S&P, we are looking at an hourly profile. And the reason we're doing that is because we're seeing more data, more information. And because we've been in this sideways trading range for a little longer than expected. So we're going to focus on just the levels and the future expectations. So the upper pivot, upper value area extreme for the S&P futures is just above 27.35. That is to be seen as range resistance, typically to play short or to be bearish or take profits into this spot. The lower area really is going to be about two, uh, 26.75. <clears throat> That's our key marker, key spot there. But we're also watching 2700. That is our roundy. So as you play out the next series of days, knowing that Friday, gives us the jobs report that's going to be pre-market so watch that before tomorrow's open for any type of range expansion or unexpected activity we will expect a little bit of continuity within these range areas maybe here maybe down but main idea is that contraction should be expected until we get a breakdown in which case that will lead to an expansion event that's what we're eager and ready to see happen. Those are the levels in the S&P futures. I'll take you to the daily chart at the end of the video, but now we're looking at short-term intraday levels and plans. The Dow Mini futures yesterday session took us right back into the point of control, magnet. We see that as a magnet, a range departure back toward the magnet. Departure down away from the magnet toward our little value area. Nope, back toward the magnet. And now we're seeing movement down away from the magnet, the point of control toward the lower extreme. And I discussed on a happy hour video that these again are targets to be used in game planning. We don't necessarily trade these levels, although you can trade a pullback to it and a departure from it. That's what these levels help us determine. Targets to play toward or away from. And we frame them in terms of value area extreme for the Dow on the hourly profile. It's about 24,900. 24,900 beneath it is yesterday or really Tuesday's pivot at 24,000. 200 point of control pretty simple at this point pretty easy reference level 24,700 again we'll be expecting range contraction range behavior 
until we get above, I'd say 25,000, keep that level in mind, or beneath 24,200. That's our Dow Mini Futures. The Russell and the NASDAQ look a little bit different. The upper area value extreme is our roundy. It is 7,000 and we're seeing play back and forth in it. Point of control, also easy, 6950. Level beneath that is just under 6900, really 6835. A departure from there suggests a range expansion breakdown to try and test out the 6600 or lower area. But don't forget, the Trade, there are open air pockets and range expansion possibilities above the profile highs. Our most interesting market, and probably the strongest at the moment, has been the Russell. Instead of going sideways, it has gone almost straight up. Now, it did have a departure to the upper extreme, and today's session took it right back in. What are the reference levels? 1650 value area extreme also 1590 lower pivot most importantly i think at this point is our point of control at 1626. let's see these same charts on the daily chart for another way to plan so we are in a range and have been within a broader range you can even see this as a lengthy triangle. So triangle trade between the two, rectangle right now. Essentially it is, as we've been saying, range in a range, contraction in a contraction. So the thought process goes, if the buyers can break us above 2750, that could probably lead to a massive expansion toward the prior high, 2800. If beneath 2675, the opposite plays us down just beneath 2640. Note how important 2700 is with 2676 in the Dow futures. Note the importance of 25,000 and that open air spot to about 2550 or even higher. That's the bullish case, the bearish scenario. Notice how the Dow is flirting with, reacting into and bouncing up off of its 200 day simple moving average. If this level fails and buyers take us under it, that could lead to an expansion move lower. The NASDAQ stronger and is playing into again, 7,000 very important spot. If above it might see a rapid expansion, 200 points higher. But beneath 68, almost 68.75, playing it down once again to 6,600. And finally, this is our strongest market. It's the Russell, showing consistent relative strength. This is our range. This is the breakout. So look to the Russell for what might happen on an upside break in our indexes. In part, this is potentially because of the rising dollar, but nonetheless, and other factors, but this, we're looking for just range expansion and contraction. Price tends to alternate between contraction, triangles and rectangles, and expansion. So we don't have the same reference points for the Russell because it is uptrending. It is making higher highs and higher lows. And so we will be referencing 1650, but above that, we have no further targets, just open air. Uh, be a little bit careful if the Russell does fall beneath 1600. These are levels and spots to integrate into your trading, be it swing or short-term intraday. Keep trading while price is in these ranges until we get our future breakout. This is Corey Rosenblum with the Theo Trade nightly video.